And good afternoon. It is once again Friday. It's 12 o'clock, so we all know where we are. Uh, at least I know where I am. Maybe you are not quite where you need to be for the day, but that's okay. Uh, our Lunch and Learn sessions are always recorded, and you can view it at your convenience. Uh, today's topic is going to be resilience. Uh, it's one of those attributes as a leader that you really have to uh, gain strength around, right? It's uh, it, resilience is like a muscle. It's something you have to exercise on a regular basis in order to really be in tune uh, with oneself. So I, I just want to give a quick, uh, uh, you know, acknowledgement to my, one of our advisory board members, Tammy Alvarez. She will actually do her own lunch and learn in the very near future. Uh, she was a contributor to the materials today. Uh, as she does this in her winner, uh, winner's circle um, with her, uh, her team members. And, and her focus is really around women in leadership, specifically in banking and tech industry. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. There will be plenty of uh, time at the back end to ask some questions. There's a lot of material here in a short period of time, but I think there are really the five points uh, that you can take away from uh, this today and put some deeper thought into that on how you are currently positioned and how this is relevant uh, to you in your professional and even your personal life. So like anything else, like we talk in our program about developing an individual development plan, which is really about what is my big dream and how can I take incremental small steps towards my big dream. For To gain resilience, it too requires you to create a plan and a stepwise plan. And this is really behavior-based, right? So we, you've heard me say many times in the past that high performance is really the function of two things. It's a technical skill and a behavior, your behavioral capacity. And it's really the behavioral capacity. It's often at the root cause of any problem or any failure that you have identified, either for yourself, for your team, or for the organization. And by nature, we are not very good at addressing our behaviors. So the five-step uh, uh, plan here is uh, really about paying attention to what you are thinking, so being in tune with yourself, finding the fact and fiction balance, so you can't believe everything that you hear or see. You have to do some validation around that. Uh, three is about getting an outsider's opinion, and that is critical as a leader to learn to receive critical feedback. It is also important to be, receive accolades and how to process that. It's another thing that we're not necessarily very good at. Four is to eliminate the haters, right? Stop allowing people to live rent-free in your head. It's really important. And then five is finding your center. And you will hear me talk about that in the program later on when you start developing your personal scorecard. I start uh, really with talking about your Zen, right? What is it that you need to do every single day for yourself at the center of you in order to be in the best position, uh, best possible position to lead. Um, again, putting these five together will allow you to build resilience. And with resilience, you'll be a better responder to live events. And that leads to that second equation I talk about a lot is E times R equals O. Live events will take, it will happen. It is how we respond to live events will determine the outcome. We have a tendency, our behavior has a tendency to want to react to things. And that's what we, the differential comes in. We need to have a deeper thought process about that. Responding doesn't delay action. It just becomes more deliberate action. So let's dive a little deeper into each of the steps and see how you can relate to each one of those. So first one is to pay attention to what you are thinking. How often do you sit back and really listen to, to your inner voice? Like I have set the challenge to, uh, to all of you just when you start changing habits and behaviors uh, that it takes a long time, right? We have done the writing exercise when you put your hand in, your pen in your non-dominant hand, it feels strange and awkward. But if you repeat that over and over and over, uh, you will change that into a new normal. But along the way, undoubtedly, you're going to have times that you don't do it, right? You skip a day, two, two, two or three. Well, at that time, your inner brain starts talking to you, right? We need to be in tune uh, with that. Another example would be is, you know, when we talk about ethics, well, ethics is about doing the right things right when nobody is looking. 
But how do you examine that for yourself? Well, when you walk the hallways of your organization and you see a piece of paper laying on the floor, do you step over that piece of paper or do you pick it up and dispose of it? All right, so I'm planting a seed in your brain now, right? That the right thing, the ethical thing to do is to pick up that piece of paper. And it doesn't make a difference if you're home and you throw something in the garbage and it falls next to it, say, screw it, somebody else will pick it up or you pick it up, right? Start to learn to listen to that inner voice. It will keep you honest. So here it is about self-talk is not the same. What's really holding you back, right? What is, what is holding you back? So here we can talk about the inner critic, right? It is about your self-image. How do you feel about you? But do you think sometimes what is wrong with me? Or I'm different. Now, remember that just because you come from a different culture and you have different experiences along your route, does it make you different, right? It, is, it makes you unique. And that's a very and that's very. Uh, you know, it's opposite of, or not quite opposite of different, but uh, uniqueness helps with, you know, uh, bringing strength to, to a team. By being different is a judgmental statement. A very common one we see is the imposter syndrome. Right? I'm a fraud. I don't belong here. Everybody will find out. And that comes from a lack of competency in a particular topic. Sometimes when we talk, we only know things skin deep. And as you go, as you questioned, the first question you might be able to answer, but as they start digging deeper into the topic, you kind of get lost, right? And that might be you, you are like an imposter. You need to know and understand it. And as we start exploring it in the Pure Leadership Program, you will start you know, really getting and making an assessment of yourself about your competencies, your talents. And once you get to recognize for yourself what, you know, where the gaps are, you can start uh, recovering from that, right? That's when you can close that gap. Another one that we see often is low self-confidence. You know, I can't do this. I can't learn that. Or I'm not good enough for this. Well, you have the experience. Well, you have the skills, knowledge, and abilities. But you cannot overcome that self-doubt. Again, the sooner you recognize that and by listening to that inner voice, and you actually, you know, this would require you to work with somebody else to help you find that confidence. That's part of the reason why we, in our peer leadership program, we talk about leading with uh, confidence, right? Being a confident leader, but remaining humble at the same time. This is something that is fundamental to becoming a high performing uh, leader. And many people don't start off at being very confident. And that's okay, right? We all start at different uh, points along the journey. As, long, as soon as we recognize this, we start listening to the inner voice and we start doing something about it. And that's why we develop a plan. We can become that much better over time, right? And the last one is about second guessing. I should have, what was right? You know, was that right? Uh, what will others think? Uh, most of us suffer from that to some extent. It is when it lingers and when it leads to a poor decision making or not making a decision, it starts impacting you. So you have to think about that for yourself. I said, where do I fall on the spectrum of each of these questions? This is not, I'm an, you know, the inner critic and the self. No, no, we can identify where we fall on each one of them on the competency level. And only when we start recognizing having these really honest conversations with yourself is where you can start building a plan on how to strengthen that, right? So step number two uh, is, are your concerns a fact or a fiction? Right? So is your inner voice happening because you have a skill gap or is it an emotional response? So how to find that out, right? As I just spoke about the inner voice, a really good way to start is to start listening to that inner voice and start documenting what it says. It sounds strange, right? And now, now you're listening to voices. I should be taking medication for that, uh, for bipolar disorder. This is about, we all have an inner voice. Uh, the inner voice often knows what is right and wrong. So start listening and documenting what that is. Um, and then compare to your behaviors uh, outwardly, right? So that's in versus out. Look at each one of them and decide, is this a, a due to an emotional? In other words, I, I 
I have no confidence in myself. Or is this because you don't have a competency? Now, it can be a little bit of both, of course, but to start understanding that will help you start the recovery process. Will help. And, this, and then start building a plan on how to close uh, the gap. And that's one of the things that we do in this program, right? It is, it's really about, uh, you know, most of us grow up as clinicians or people work in the front line, became, you know, are high performing, but, you know, we're, we're standouts in the organization. And then we're promoted into managerial roles or leadership roles, but don't necessarily have the skill sets that, you know, to, to lead effectively both people and process. So, you know, if you recognize that, you can develop a gap. Now, sometimes you feel like you have it all down pat, but you have, you know, you might be at the 50th percentile or 60th percentile. Very few people who transition to organizations from uh, position to position lead at the top of their license or top of their privilege in their position, right? And as soon as you can understand the gap, uh, the quicker you can continue to, uh, you know, overcome that by closing the gaps and, and by gaining experience along the way. It is all about practice, right? So first you listen, then you analyze, then you close the gap by fixing it, you reframe it, and then you practice, right? And the reframing is about continuously getting better at that PDCA, plan, do, check, act. How can we continuously improve as leaders? Step number three, get an outsider's opinion. And here I find it really is a lot of value. In a pure leadership program, we ask people to do a reflective uh, survey with the team members above you to the side of you and below you. And why you want to do that as a, as a leader is you want to do this to, to gain feedback and insight on how they feel about you. Now, the, the problem is that, again, the behavioral capacity of most people is not strong enough to, give, to tell you what you need to hear. They tell you what you want to hear. So here it becomes very important for you to be very careful and select people and create that safe environment where they are willing to give you feedback. So if you say, uh, hey, Steve, give me feedback now, that's often you know, a gut reaction and not well thought out. So you might want to plan this out by giving some context behind it and asking for their time and, they, and, and that they prepare for the conversation. Reflective thinking is what do I do well? Where can I improve? And what would you do in my case? Right? That's how you can continue to learn. Now, the caveat is this. We cannot react to everything that we hear. So I use a very simple analogy and something that hopefully will can, can, can stick with you. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Walter, your hair looks funny. I say, screw up. Who the hell are you to tell me my hair looks funny? But if that second person comes to me and says, hey, Walter, your hair looks funny. I'm going to temper it down a little bit. You know, all right, whatever. Now, when the third person comes to me and says, hey, Walter, your hair looks funny. What do I need to do, Candice? Uh, you're on mute. It's okay. I'll cover you. I know you know the end. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, I go to the nearest mirror and I look in the mirror because my hair is likely funny, right? Mm -hmm. So as you... <laughs> Ask for feedback from the, the, from the people you chose. Don't react to everything that they say. But when you start hearing it a second and a third time, there's often a lot of truth to it. This is extremely powerful, right? It is, it is you know, what it, you, you see in the picture over here, the banana when it looks into the mirror, right? Uh, but, but it is about making sure that they are both uh, give you feedback on your strengths, right? What you do really well. Uh, but also how you can improve, and those are your blind spots, right? So, so ask pertinent questions, uh, keep good notes, and then compare them after the fact and say, where do I see a common theme between the five, six, seven people that I have interviewed? Very, very, very powerful stuff here. All right, last one, or oh, the second to last one, step number four is eliminate the haters. Uh, I put this very simple. If there's anybody that's, that spends more time in your head then they have paid rent for, get rid of it, right? Or at the worst case, minimize any interaction with these people. And promise you, I, I've been on all the levels of organization from the, from the front line to the C-suite. We all have people who live rent-free in our heads. Listen to your inner voice. 
try to work your way to it. Again, this is where your trust partner or your coach or your mentor comes into play. Learn how to mitigate that, right? And it's often done by exposing it. In other words, having being very honest with yourself on who is causing a negative reaction and how to best position yourself to eliminate that. So again, this is not easy stuff, but by, by leaving it as is, there's an unquestionable having an impact on you over time. And it's one of the main reasons why people burn out or leave organizations, right? You have heard the adage, uh, you know, people don't leave uh, organizations, they leave bad people. Well, those bad people often live rent for your head. And, I'll, uh, and, and just as a remedy, because you will be a leader of people most likely, if not already, uh, but remind yourself on how you position yourself to them. When you pick up the phone call or phone and say, hey, Steve, come to me. Uh, you come to my office for a minute. There has a lot of implications, right? This is, well, am I in trouble? Remember that brain is 65% negative, right? So they immediately go to, what did I do wrong? So if you say, hey, Steve, can you come to the office? I would like to go over a new project you might, you might fit into. That, that causes excitement and dopamine. Right? So think about it. When you have a conversation with somebody, uh, don't have the person sit and you stand. Right? Don't be in, the, in their personal space. We'll talk a lot more about that in other opportunities. But all these things you have to kind of keep in mind to make it a safe, psychological and physical safe environment to have these conversations for you and for the person that is on the, on the, on the other end. And then step number five, right? that's where it comes together is that finding your center. So <clears throat> fear often prevents us from living our fullest potential. That self-doubt, low confidence, etc. If you are not moving forward on something you want, fear is probably the culprit. But the word fear is strong, right? Think about your behavioral capacity is low, right? Your confidence is low, and or you need to identify what the driver is for you. So there are several steps you can take to get back onto track, right? Write down the one thing you want and that you are not moving forward on. Now that can be very personal and I'll use one for myself. Uh, I've been a borderline diabetic probably for three years. I know that I need to keep an eye on my weight. I need to keep an eye on my carbohydrates. I need to be able to drink enough fluids and I cannot go on any binging. Well, that's very easy said. <laughs> but that is very hard, right? Especially for somebody who works very irregular hours. My mindset and I, my willpower tank when it comes down to going to gym and exercising is probably at maybe 10% at best. And, and the time is empty. But when you reckon, when you have a, a burning platform, right? There's a, you, you're in a pre-disease status, status. And now somebody tells you that this is going to escalate if you do nothing about it. Now you can identify that you know, I have to do something about it. So I'm afraid of something, right? If I don't do it, that's my burning platform. I will develop diabetes or hypertension or other diseases, right? So you need to find that. And then identifying what, you know, what I need to change. What do I need to do? For me, it is I need to drink more fluids. I need to go to the gym three times a week. But how do I go about doing that? How can I do it so it is consistent, right? That inner voice of yours is going to tell the truth all of the time. They will remind you, right? But you need to build a plan around it on how you can go forward by understanding what holds you back, right? So what am I afraid of? What's the probability of it happening? How to prevent it? How to minimize it? And what's the worst case scenario? These are real steps you can take. Now, this can be about public speaking. This can be about relationships. This can be about you know, going for a job interview. This is, can be as simple as looking outside of your organization. This can be having a conversation with an, uh, somebody who's underperforming. So all these things are real, right? These are real feelings and all of us struggle with this at some point, somehow. All right, so this is the end of the talk about resilience. If you, uh, you know, I'll field a couple of questions when I'm gonna stop recording in, in two seconds from now. Uh, but again, resilience is like a muscle, no different than when we're working on our EQ. If you want resilience, and we all should, we need to exercise this very regularly. All right, let me stop the recording. We'll go to the Q&A session.